imagine if you lived in the sky amongst the clouds? I think it would suck because I'm afraid of heights. Anyway, if you head on over to the gallery, click on hashtag and type in FGG sky build, you get a whole bunch of builds that are built in the sky. And we're going to be looking at some of these today. First build we're going to be looking at is moving home by Cesarulo. I built this home for my sim in a huge lot, but now the new crest mayor wants to make his place a park. I won't let him bulldoze the house, so we agreed to move it to another place. The problem is the budget for the project ended in the middle of it, and the best solution is to throw a ladder and keep my sim living there. You weren't kidding when you said biggest lot in Newcrest. If this is what I think it is, it is the funniest thing I have ever seen. Here we are at moving home, and can I just say this is probably the silliest thing I have seen? So you're telling me they wanted to build a park here, and they wanted to move your house, so they put a crane on it, and then they lost the budget? What kind of park were they gonna make? Chris, this is probably one of the cleverest things I have seen anybody make. And aside from the obvious gag, I think that the landscaping is actually flawless. Oh wait, I put the grid on. There we go. Like, this looks so well done. This looks so professional. Even all oh, they left the backyard. We don't have anyone operating the crane, so your house is just dangling, and I don't know how safe that is. I love all the clutter at the base of this. Overall, just already so well detailed. As we approach the house, we see a giant crevice in which the house's foundation used to lie. I don't even know how you did this, and honestly, I think I'm beyond asking at this point. A backyard that technically can still be accessed, and a long, long climb up to get into your house. I feel like they're eating snakes here. And here we are at the porch. This is going to be a very difficult build to view because the camera really does not like to... You see what it's... You see what it... Once you get to the third floor, it's just all over from here. Here we are in the living room. Everything is really nice. Like, this is a pretty... I mean, aside from the, the glitches, this is a pretty solid house. Are you allowed to step out of this? Oh, you can. There's like a little balcony here. Okay. I thought that would just plummet you to your death. A really cute and simple kitchen. And we've only got two rooms. Here is the bedroom. Very nice and simple. I guess you can't really afford to have too many decorations because I imagine this house swings from time to time. If you woohoo, I feel like this thing would start going topsy-turvy. And then I assume this is the bathroom, which it is a very simple, yep, very, very nice bathroom. Now it is very simple and very nice. Honestly, you can tell all the work went into doing all of this and this is actually almost like a perfect build. Amazing job. The next build we're gonna be looking at is Fairy Training Camp by Martin underscore G22. Welcome to Fairy Training Camp where we train our future fairies. These are the dormitories for our new recruits. Fire Fairy, which specializes in fighting. Sun Fairy, which specializes in light. Nature Fairy, which specializes in plants. And Water Fairy, which specializes in water. Enjoy your stay. Maybe one day I'll be able to pronounce special, specialize, specialize. Uh, here we are at the Fairy Training Camp. I decided to review it at night because I mean, come on, this is already very much much like a fairy magical grove. And if this doesn't convince the Sims team to give us fairies, I don't know what will anymore. These are absolutely beautiful. It seems so like fantastical and whimsical and wonderful. The fact that you've had these buildings just attached to the tree, I think they're hanging from the tree. I don't even know. Or maybe they're magically floating because they're fairies and they can just float like that. We're gonna go from a ground view first and just kind of take a stroll through the garden. This is absolutely beautiful. You put candles in the pond. Oh, there's like a little tiny grove in here. I'm pretty sure if I go inside, there won't be anything because this is like a rabbit hole, which is fine. I'm pretty sure actual rabbits do live in this hole. This is just absolutely gorgeous. You can tell so much time went into landscaping. Now, there's only one way to get into these builds, and that's all flying, which I suddenly can do. So we'll go into this first house, and oh my god, this is just like heaven. I love the constellations in the sky. That is so pretty. The fact that you were able to place these counters in a room that looks like this just shows that you were far better a builder and then I, where did you even get those clutter items from? I love all the crystals and the plants and like starfish just everywhere. Fairies really don't care. They just collect everything. Oh my God. And you downloaded custom paintings. Okay, Galadriel. There's so much to look at. Like the fact that the TV stand is a mushroom with a mushroom on it. And you don't ever, ever tell me I put too many plants in the build. You hear me? This is so pretty. We'll go in here now. And we have just like this lovely little cozy bathroom that is totally glitching. And I can see everything inside 
inside the fridge. Even the more custom paintings. We're gonna go counterclockwise now and go into here, which I assume this is the water fairy. I was definitely right. This is definitely an under the sea vibe. This is so cute. I love this wallpaper still. I love it. I don't really know what fairies do all day. Apparently nothing. And reading. Do they even have to water the plants or do their spells just do it for them? We'll go in through this room now, which is another bathroom, but this is a bit more greenish blue, which is really nice. Oh my God. I just realized there's like a picnic down here, like a Mad Hatter themed tea party going on. That is so cute. And the last little fairy house on the right. Okay, this is fire fairy. This is totally fire fairy. I actually really like this. Oh my God, I love this. Oh my, oh my God. It really looks like magic is happening right now. You guys are so clever. This is like angsty fairy. Like imagine a little tiny fairy that has anger issues. Like how adorable is that? Even a little fire trophy for being fire. That just sounds like a participation trophy at that point. And here we have a little red bathroom. But this is so cute. Well, I guess it's orange. What, whatever. This was honestly such a detailed build. Amazing job. The last build we're gonna be looking at is Steampunk Headquarters by Lightning Clocks. A scheme involving oil, mother plants, and the land grab family sends the world into an apocalyptic spiral. Steampunk is back and the occult have come out of hiding to help save Sims from inevitable doom. Flying ships packed with well-trained soldiers are sent on missions and return to these headquarters to rest and discuss strategy. Not everything is as it seems when home base is run by tiny flying orbs. And is that Bella Goth? Oh, and this was hell to build. Hope you enjoy. I can't even imagine how you would begin to build anything steampunk in The Sims 4. Do we even have steampunk items? Oh my god. Here we are at the steampunk headquarters. This looks absolutely insane. There's so much to unpack here and I don't even know where to begin. We'll start at the bottom. I love the ruins already. So you already have the apocalyptic vibe going on. A crashed ship. I guess they have flying ships. So this one um crashed probably. We also have this railroad going through, meeting some more ruins here and there and some machinery, of course. And this whole thing is set atop some actual clouds. And I'm not even going to ask what those are. The exterior is already so much to unpack. It's sat on some clouds. There's machinery everywhere. And these balloons are holding it up. Plus this like industrial windmill. This is so good. I left the grid on. There we go. I didn't even realize the flying ship behind it. How do I get in? Where do I even get in from? I assume from here. This is like the only door I see. And in we go. Oh my God. This is so cute. It's definitely a mix of fantasy and uh, not like machines. Steampunk is a very specific thing. And the fact that you added magic and occults to it. I'm so excited to see how this goes. A pretty good kitchen though. We'll head on through here. And we've entered this hallway, which leads to a bar. So this is definitely like HQ. And you've got these like mechanical brooms as well. So these are definitely for the spellcasters. Oh, it's got like a little little saloon vibe. Oh my god, I love this. I'm in love. You definitely need Journey to Batu for this. You even have this Batu bookshelf with all of these like magic things in it. So many details. Got a couple of doors we can go through. If we go through this one, we have this little industrial bathroom. If we go through this one, we have, I guess, what's storage? And uh, I don't know why you would need this, but to each their own. Oh, there's like a giant vault here. Do should I go in? Fuck it. Yeah, let's go inside. And oh, this leads outside. Okay, I didn't realize there was like a little balcony situation going on. This this is like a maze. <gasps> Wait, no, this is like a docking station for the ships. I'm in awe. Where am I even going? Oh, this leads back in here. Okay, I just went in a circle. That's fine. We'll go upstairs where the camera will obviously want me dead. And we have like a little study area. I guess this is like either like a library or kind of like a canteen almost. We go through this door. It leads us outside for a wonderful view of the Caliente's house. Through this door, we have some sleeping quarters, which are really nice. It's giving bunks. You know what I mean? And I really, really like it. I love all the details details and clutter everywhere. You really put your whole gussy into this. I assume that's a bathroom. I was right. It is a bathroom and it's a very, very nice looking bathroom. Okay. And I'm not even mad about the windows because like who's going to see you in the sky? Nobody. Love all of this. Continuing through here, this leads into another bunk room. So they all share the same bathroom, which is going to get really annoying and really stinky. We head through this room here. We have just like a little don't wake the llama station. That's so cute. Are these supposed to be beings and people? Because I see these guys everywhere. Like they're sat here here and they're having a discussion over there. Down through this door, we have an archaeological table right here. And also this is probably, oh, oh, okay. Where the captain is steering or a bunch of little fairies steering at once. That is so funny. And it leads to a lovely little balcony over here. Finally, we have this ladder, which leads up and it's just like a little storage room. They're just keeping all their stuff here. And the final stairs to lead us to the last floor or not. There's still another ladder. How many floors is this? Oh, wait, I went downstairs. I got a little confused. Now we go upstairs. 
Oh, what is, what is this? This looks important. A very cramped room, which leads to a balcony with such a beautiful view of another ship. I assume it's like the captain's study or something, which leads to the captain's bedroom, of course. So this is the big boy bedroom with fairies around a cauldron. I wanna know their story. Why are you here? I know the camera was very, very wonky, but this was genuinely an outstanding build. I have no words, to be honest. Like the creativity it must have taken to even think of this. And then you actually did it. I don't think I'm ever gonna build something as good as this. Thank you.